Hi, I've been doing search and rescue for about a year now. This is my long-term review of the Coaxure SR1 Endeavor, as well as a breakdown of what's in my 24-hour pack. We don't follow strictly the NASAR standards. We have our own standards that we follow. So as you'll see, it's a little bit different than is typical. What you'll see off the bat is that this bag is different than the one that it comes with it. Uh, I found that this pack wasn't sufficient for what I needed. The total volume, it could have fit within here. However, the way that I like to have this kitted out, it needed to be larger on the rear pack and this front pack is fine as it is. Uh, other accessories that I bought, I have the fire shelter pack, which I will probably be testing in about a month. It also came, when I bought this pack, it came with the cell phone holder, which doesn't actually fit my cell phone, which is probably why it came with it. If I try really hard, I can squeeze a Baofeng type radio in here, but it's not very pretty. So let's start with the overall pack itself. What I think about it, it's modular. It's nice because you can add and remove the, uh, different modules. However, what I have found is that the it only is modular with itself. So, uh, even though there is some PAL slash Molly webbing on here, there's not a lot on the pack itself, and you'll see some of the compromises that I have had to make as I break this pack down. Other things that I've noticed is that the way that it is modular is with these buckles, which means that wherever there's a buckle, one, there's an option for it to come loose, but two, it acts as a pivot or swing joint, which means even if I have this as cinched down as much as possible, there's still a lot of movement. Last week I was doing a lot of land nav type orienteering stuff and hiked about 20 miles total that day. A lot of it had really strict time hacks, which meant I was doing a lot of trotting slash jogging to get in between checkpoints. And every time I started to pick up jog, there's a lot of movement, a lot of rubbing, and you just feel the pack swing back and forth as you go side to side. That being said, after 20 miles, the pack was still comfortable. It's very adjustable, so what I did is at first I had it nice and tight on my body and as I felt my shoulders got a little bit tired, I loosened up the shoulder straps and put more of the weight on my hips. And once my hips started getting a little bit tired, then I started putting those weight back on my shoulders. There's a couple odd things with how this pack is designed that I don't quite fully understand. So for example, well, we'll get into it. Um, as I see something that's I like or don't like, I'll point it out. So starting at the bottom, we have the quote-unquote EMS pouch. And even though it's recommended to use the specific EMS pouch attachment points down on these buckles right here, I use the ones for the fire shelter because that allows me to plop the bag down and then have access to everything I need in here. In here I have basic triage stuff. Uh, glucometer, blood pressure cuff, uh, pulse ox, stethoscope, as well as some tourniquet stuff, some baby aspirin, PPE, and stuff like that. For an EMS pouch, I think it's kind of terrible because there's no place to put anything. It just is a bag. So you open it up and if I'm on the side of the hill, all this is rolling out all over the place. It also makes it really hard to organize stuff so I can easily find it. Or if I'm asking somebody else to grab something for me, for them to easily find it. We'll finish unclipping this, and now this pack is out of the way. The pack that the Endeavor comes with is this pack right here. As you see, it's smaller, significantly smaller. What I found about this pack is that while I could kind of fit everything, it just didn't give me the organization that I needed for what I wanted in here, and so it had to go. One of the things that I'll say about the Coactra pack in general, and this is for every product that I've used with theirs, and as you can see, I've got quite a bit of their modules, is 
that they'll have a main pocket and they'll have a side pocket, but the side pocket, I call it a zero volume pocket because it's just two flaps that are tied together at the back. So anything that you put in the main pocket takes away space from what you can put in the side pocket. And the side pocket can't really hold that much volume. So you end up putting very thin flat things in, the, in this pocket here and in the main pocket you can put everything else. When you try and really pack a bunch of stuff in there and you start getting this main compartment to sort of bulk up, now when you try and get something out of here, it's really tough to get your hand in even to get some of the items out. And then you end up having to take stuff out of the main pocket to get to stuff in the back here or more likely to put it back. I think I already talked about the fire shelter. Uh, it has a glove compartment. I haven't put a fire shelter in it yet. I, like I said, in about a month I'll be using it. So let's get to this back pocket. So I'm going to disassemble it as I go. So you can see what it's all about. So in here I have trauma shears. I also have trauma shears in the coaxial EMS pouch itself because it's modular, but that one doesn't have any molly, so if I want to keep something easy access on the outside, I can't. However, if I'm taking this off because I don't need the contents inside here, I'm without uh, trauma shears. So two is one and one is none in that case. In the bottom pouch, I have a tape measure. I have a little orienteering compass. I'm not very satisfied with it. I also have a graphical aid. The, uh, Protractor, as they call it, as well as the card from a Silva Compass, as well as a little backup inspection light. I don't expect a light like that to really light up the night. However, if my main light fails, I still have something that takes the same batteries, so one is as good as the other. In the top pouch, I just have an IRPG. And in the main compartment, I have PPE primarily, as well as a first aid kit. First aid kit has all the boo-boos and stuff like that, whereas the EMS pouch, I have stuff that I'm more willing to share with other people. In here, I have safety glasses, good for at night. I also have EarPro, some leather work gloves. I have some allergy medication, hand sanitizer, chapstick, as well as uh, some antacid tablets. Power supply, this is one that you can plug directly into the wall. It has a quick charge. And then I have a power cable that has USB-A on one side lightning, USB-C, and micro-USB, so I can charge whatever, as well as spare batteries for the flashlights. I have goggles for heliops, sunscreen, and then in here I have snacks, electrolyte powder, stuff that's easy to get to, easy food, easy calories, so if we're hiking somewhere I can ask somebody to reach in there, grab something, and it'll all be good enough, as well as some insect propellant. In the main pack, I carry a smart water liter bottle. This is good because it works with the filter that I use and for the same price as an algae, it weighs less and it comes filled with water. In the side pockets, I have a set of knee pads. They're just really cheap foam knee pads. They're lightweight. Uh, you don't think about knee pads until you're asked to crawl shoulder to shoulder to look for something. My organization requires I have a tag for my allergies. I just get pitting edema from bee stings, so there you go. Into the main pack, first thing you're going to see is I have an MRE. That is my 24 hours of nutrition. That's above and beyond what's in there, so while I could technically survive what's on there, I'm going to be a lot more comfortable if I have one of my favorite MREs in here. 
This is the civilian version made by Sopaco. It's the same thing as the military version, except for it has clear packing. The military versions, if you have them, the, the green packing, you technically aren't supposed to be able to get them, which means if you are getting them, they're either stolen or they're expired, and neither of those I feel very comfortable with, whereas these are brand new, fresh, and have a great shelf life. In here I have a survival kit. I call it my survival kit because it's a little bag with a water filter. I have a three wick beeswax candle, stormproof matches, Vaseline soaked uh, cotton swabs, emergency blanket, a signaling mirror, even though my compass has a mirror in it. I like having a specific signal mirror because if you know how to use the aiming device, it makes your life a lot easier without having to try and figure out exactly where something's pointing. Last two things I have is one is an emergency whistle and then I have a standard big lighter with about 10 feet of duct tape rolled onto it. Next up in here is this bag. In here I have 25 feet of tubular webbing. I also have 50 feet of paracord and I have a pair, set of Prusik loops. Tin cup as well as a rain poncho and the rain poncho allows me to use that as a shelter as well. It's a military style poncho. Off to the side I have some cable ties. I have just a cheap trowel and I have dude wipes, uh, mountain shower basically. On the other side, I have contractor bags wrapped up with uh, Velcro. And then I also have a couple of chem lights. On the front pouch here, I have spare socks, I have a bandana, I have a buff, I have a reflective vest, I have a beanie, and I have a mesh mosquito net, as well as some cold weather gloves. The idea is that the gloves would be used in conjunction with the, the leather gloves to give a little bit extra warmth. But if I know I'm going into conditions that would require gloves, I'd probably be wearing better gloves outfitted on me. As this comes off, you'll see my first weird hiccup is this pack has two buckles for the top. One connects the pack to the frame, the other connects the pack directly to the shoulder harness. I've tried adjusting this, I just feel more or less pressure in between my shoulders. So I'm not too sure what it's doing other than trying to cinch it up a little bit. But even then it doesn't quite, I can't quite figure out a good way to configure it. So that's the main pack out. In here I have the water bladder. It does not come with a water bladder, but it's a pack designed for it. It just uses a standard camelback. And then you'll see a little bit on what's on the side. Here I have an Aubrey long folding antenna, the super tactical version. I like it. Way. So yeah, I like it, although I wish I could mount it a little bit higher. The reason that I like having a remote mount antenna is because then you don't have a big thing sticking out like that when you're trying to get on the radio. Uh, as far as mounting stuff on the front, I just have a little PTT for a bow thing, and I have a magnetron carabiner with a black diamond helmet and a coast headlamp. I have a little retainer to keep the camel back in place. I also have a hair tie to hold this a little bit closer to where I need it to be. On to here, I have Coaxure's multi-purpose pouch. Right now I'm using it as a radio pouch. 
However, if I'm not assigned a radio, or if I'm not carrying a radio, it'll probably carry hose clamps or something like that. On here I have a Crydex folding uh, mag dump pouch, and it's just as loosely attached onto the buckle of the DOS system. On this side I have their flag and tape dispenser. It's okay. I find that normal construction flagging tape fits really tightly in here, so you have to kind of use a couple like 10-15 feet of flagging tape before it'll actually start fitting and feeding okay. Here I have a Leatherman Wave tool with all the bits and accessories. This is my multi-purpose thing, so I have it nice and down front. And that pretty much goes over the pack itself. I found that the pack itself is comfortable. I found that the problems that I've had is the way that things attach onto the harness. So for example, you have these long loops right here, which you're supposed to use instead of your standard Powell's Molly whatever webbing, which means, for example, this radio mount is mounted way lower than it needs to be, and it slides around a lot. That's true for all the, the panels. And the stuff that doesn't quite fit these long loops right here, you just have to put it on the belt loop right here, which also causes a lot of movement. I would like it to be nice and tight. The second thing that I noticed is that there's lots of loose flaps right here. I don't think it looks great. I could tape it up, but if you're paying for a nice wildland pack, you'd expect it to be like that. What you'll also notice if you compare this pack to other packs, especially if you're doing dual search and rescue and wildland, is that the pack weight is carried much higher than on an equivalent mystery ranch, for example. Before I was using this pack, I was using the Eberl Stock J79 system. Specifically, I was using the Little Brother pack as my 24-hour pack, and then the rest of the accessories were going on the outer shell of that pack. I thought it was much sleeker. However, it doesn't really handle a hydration system very well, and because the Little Brother pack is the way that it is, you have these two long zippers that are sort of dangling off the back of the pack. I also had some ergonomic issues. I, No matter how much I tried, I couldn't get the uh, hip straps to keep from rubbing on me. This one I haven't had problems with hip straps. I haven't had problem with the back support. Overall weight between this fully kitted out and the Everall Stock Little Brother kitted out, the same. This weighs one pound more. So if you're a weight weenie, that makes a big difference. Would I buy this pack again? Knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably keep on looking and find something a little bit more versatile in the sense of having a nice clean fit, having pockets that you can actually put things in, and having a better understanding of what I need on me and where I need it. I think this pack does a poor job of placing more stuff around you and in front and places stuff very up high and uh, far away from the body. But yeah, besides that, there's a couple features that I don't quite understand. For example, having dual sets of buckles or having buckles that are different male and female for the EMS pack or for the main pack. And then some weird things like this main pack has this right here, which I have not figured out what it could possibly use for other than retaining this little piece of string, basically. So that's a review of what's in my 24-hour pack. I've used this pack for quite a bit. I find getting two things can be kind of easy, but it also can be very complicated. I find that the overall weight of the pack is a little bit more than I want, and I find that there are certain de design decisions that I don't quite understand. For example, the side of the pack that you can access, you can only open it this much. However, the other side, you have a zipper that you can up open up the entire way, and you also have another flap here. However, you can't access it without completely undoing the pack from your body. 
and the way that the buckles are configured, you can't install it the other way around. So with that in mind, I would not buy this again. However, it's not bad enough that I'm instantly returning it. I haven't tried Coaxure's SR1 Valor pack. It's another interesting option. However, at this point, I think seeing that a lot of the accessories, for example, are made in Myanmar and not US made and just overall quality is okay. It's not impressive. I would probably choose a different brand. If you have any thoughts on brands that you would recommend, I'm open to hear about it in the comments. And if you find this video helpful, uh, let me know. Thank you very much. All right, just adding on another little addendum there. I talked about why I went to the larger pack because of how I configure it. I didn't really explain what that meant, so I figured I'd do a little add-on to describe it. So the way that I have it configured is this is stuff that I'll probably need regardless of the mission, which means I'll probably be carrying this unless it's something where I know I'm not going to be more than a mile from anything. It also has all my PPE, so if I wear all my PPE, then I can pretty much eject this. This has all the stuff that if I'm actually going out in the woods and stuff like that, that makes more sense to have. However, if I'm just staying local, then I can eject this and just put this on, and that reduces my pack by quite, quite a bit. It allows me to remove and replace the pack without having to dig through all my stuff and have my car or my rack or whatever filled with loose bits of kit. This obviously comes off when I'm not expected to do anything EMS related and it can be replaced with a fire shelter. So when I am not in a role where I'm, for example, when we have other more qualified EMS staff and they've been assigned as the role as the team EMS provider, then I'll go ahead and take this off and then I don't have to worry about it. The main pack, the camelback, that I'll pretty much carry no matter what. As just a camelback, it's pretty darn heavy, so I do have just a camelback as a separate pack if that's really all that I need. I will say that filling this thing is an absolute nightmare because you have to basically undo this pack in order to get access to the zipper, to get access to the thing, and then you're carrying this whole discombobulated thing into the watering fountain. Either that or do what I do and I just fill up another bottle and then I pour transfer from there to there, but you're double handling water at that point. That's pretty much all the addendum that I had to do. Like I said earlier, if you like this video, like it. If you have anything to add, I'd really love to hear what the community has to say. Whether you've been doing it for 50 years or you haven't been doing it or you're not even in search and rescue, just curious what might be in an emergency bug out bag, so to speak. As you can see, this isn't nearly as tactical as some other bug out bags. However, it carries a lot of the same equipment that you might want because that really is the ultimate goal of being in search and rescue is to not become the victim while searching for another victim. Thank you.